Hey folks, uh, Dr. Baker here. So we weren't able to get through the very few last slides of our conversation about regression. So I just want to cover this topic here very quickly. So if we look at our slides, our first set of regression output right here, earlier when we were looking at the overall model output, uh, I noted that we had something called both R squared and something called adjusted R squared. And I said uh, the relevance of adjusted R squared will become more apparent uh, as we start building and testing more complex models. So let's take a look over here at our adjusted R squared in the equation. So the thing I want you to notice is that first of all, this thing called adjusted R squared has R squared directly in it. And perhaps the most important aspect that we need to clock for adjusted R squared is that it also incorporates K, which in this case, K is the understood as the uh, number of predictors that we introduced into our model. So in class, in class, we talked about the idea of any time you build a prediction model, regression or otherwise, there's sort of two fundamental goals you have in mind. On one hand, you want accuracy. Of course, if you're building a prediction model, you want it to be accurate with its predictions, but you also desire simplicity. And one of the things that we noticed when we were comparing the two models in the examples was in our second example, when we had two predictors, it was a slightly more complex model, which isn't desirable, but even worse, it also was uh, less accurate. But usually that's not the case. Um, oftentimes it is true where as we introduce additional predictors into our model, uh, it does broadly tend to at first, if we, if we pick good decent predictors, uh, increase our overall prediction accuracy at the expense of complexity. But typically that also, there's a threshold. Uh, at some point we may find introducing predictors that are not relevant, not important. Um, and yes, our, our model gets more complex, but at the extent and little overall performance. So here is where this thing called adjusted R squared instead of just R squared can be a little helpful. It can be a tool to help us understand where a simple regression model, uh, sorry, multiple linear regression model has become too complex. So let's take a look at this chart. So what I want you to notice here is the following. On the x-axis, we have four hypothetical models. What the particular equation looks like, like the y equals and what the predictors are, is not important. But what is important for you to notice is here in this thing called model one, we have two parameters, aka two predictors. Uh, model three, or actually just one predictor, I'm sorry, because the intercept's a parameter as well. In model two, we have uh, two predictors and then the intercept. Model three, we have three predictors. In model four, we have four predictors plus the intercept. And one of the other things that we are assuming is whatever this regression model is about, whatever we're trying to predict, it's the same outcome, we're using the same data, and we are adding more predictors as we go more and more complex. We're not eliminating any of the predictors, we're just introducing more and more and more predictors. So it's getting more and more complex. Okay, so complexity of the model is going from less on the left to more on the right. Now let's take a look at these hypothetical values of R squared and adjusted R squared. So the first thing I want you to notice is that R squared is always some value greater than, for the same model, greater than the adjusted R squared. That'll always be the case. Uh, the other thing I want you to notice is if we just look at R squared for a moment, notice that R squared, sure, it, the value of its increase uh, isn't, isn't increasingly, it isn't increasing as much, it doesn't get more pronounced, but notice that it's always going up, always going up. And that's actually a necessarily true characteristic of R squared, meaning if I had kept 
introducing more and more and more predictors to the same model, keeping the same previous predictors and just introducing more and more and more, even purely random variables, like literally just making a random variable and introducing it. Something that would have happened is R squared would have continuously, ever so slowly, increased, 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 increased. And that's that reveals the secret of why R squared alone is not a great tool for selecting between alternative models, because even when we know we are increasingly adding more and more useless and meaningless predictors, R squared, a property of it is it must continuously grow. Now, adjusted R squared is not that. Notice here, eventually here, as we go from model three to model four, adjusted R squared actually goes down. And it is not necessarily true that adjusted R squared had to start going down right here between model three and model four. But what is true is what it is attempting to communicate to us is what Whatever that additional predictor was that we introduced from model three to model four, whatever that predictor was, it didn't have sufficient predictive power to warrant the additional model complexity. And adjusted R squared, that's what it's adjusting for. It's punishing model complexity. It is tolerant of model complexity as long as the predictors that we're adding increase accuracy in a substantial way. But if the complexity doesn't come at the benefit of more meaningful prediction accuracy, it will start resulting in lower and lower values. So in that way, when you're comparing between alternative models, when you're trying to predict the same outcome using the same data, and you're introducing more and more predictors, uh, adjusted R squared can be a useful way to help understand when your model has gotten too needlessly complex. Uh, there's a bunch of other options for like sort of assessing this issue of like which model is uh, the, the right balance between accuracy and uh, simplicity, uh, AIC, BIC, and many others. Uh, that's not relevant for BA642, uh, but this broad issue of how do we know when we've reached a model that balances these two things well is always true, whatever we're in the business of prediction. So that wraps up the uh, lecture. Uh, just be mindful that adjusted R squared is it adds an element where it also simultaneously rewards us for increasing model accuracy, but also has a element where it punishes us for adding uh, more predictors because we're trying to balance this issue of complexity. Uh, that's it. Okay, have a great day.